priesthood of the Father. His priesthood. Because that's what Levi represents to us. You know who the turquoise, but the priesthood of God. And that includes all of us. You know, we're not, uh, it's, it's every believer. Because once you become a Christian, you're automatically in that, in that realm with him. I don't care what the church says. If they're a believer in Christ, they believe Jesus Christ died. He, he's a Jew, and he's from Israel. He's from the tribe of Judah, and he is, if we're going to follow him, and God's going to say, you know what, you're grafted in here. You're going to follow his teachings and his ways, then you're in that kingdom. You're following him. He is the Christianity that we follow. Period. So they thought, uh, Lucifer and Hiram thought and decided <laughs> that uh, God could be a part of their priesthood. You know, and it cost them dearly. Mm -hmm. It was a very, very serious mistake. But yet he still was, he still, with his love, was trying to rattle them. Shake them to get them to, to do things, just like he does us. You know, to try to wake us up. So he said, "I'm gonna give them one more stone, one more thing." So he gave them the ninth stone, which was the emerald. And the emerald represents who? Judah. And he wanted. Now this was a, this was probably the biggest mistake that they both made. And we need to listen to this mistake. And listen to what happened. Because stone, that stone means praise. So when you look at the word of God, it says what? It says we shall praise him all day and all night. And only him. And only him. So what they needed to know is that the last stone given to them, <coughs> the stone was the very instrument that caused them their fall. They thought they had it. He goes, well, if he's going to ask them to praise him all day and all night, that means people got to praise us all day and all night. And guess what? That's not happening. There's only one God. Period. So, <clears throat> God, we need to make sure that God is lifted up to guide and direct the ministries that we're in. God has chosen us and given us charge over the ministries that we're in. It was mine. Barbara's, Jean's, anybody in here who is uh, ministering to people outside, he's giving you charge over those ministries, and uh, he expects you to do it to the fullness of his kingdom, and then remember, and remember, and remember that God is in charge of all of his ministries, and only him. So then we come down to the big mistake that they made. Nine stones, but guess who held the last three? There was still three that he was standing at home. He said, sorry boys, I wasn't done. And so we go to the last three. And we, and, and, uh, let's take a look at them because they're important as well. Because this is the three that we're going to earn. I believe we're going to earn these, uh, and he's going to give them to us. So we go with the jack, and, and this stone is connected to the tribe of Dan. Dan means to judge or judgment, okay? So what Iram and Lucifer didn't understand was that although uh, that his love was judgment, his love was, you know, for him to love us, he has to judge us. He said that in his word. He said, you're going to be judged. Because I watch Hagia, you're going to be either judged after you get there or the white throne. I would rather be judged back here. <laughs> I don't want to go to that thing. Here, you know, I don't want to even go over near it. No. What, what color is that stone? What do you want? Uh, no, I didn't write the color of that stone down. I'll have to get it for you, though. What was the name of the stone? Jacqueline. So that was the first one that they missed was judgment. Okay? 
I didn't write the colors of seat down, but I did. Well, yeah, I did too. That's the second part. They wouldn't tell us the colors yet. Yeah, I'm going to tell you the colors yet. <laughs> Come on. I want you to stick around. No, no. Google gonna, it. I'm going to give them to you. Google it, Karen. You're okay. Yeah. Is that what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> anyway, it's a, and the second one was the agate. This stone was connected to Naphtali. Now, let me tell you, uh, I, this is my personal opinion. It means to uh, my wrestling of sacred schemes. And Kitty's been around me long enough to know that I like sacred schemes. Uh -huh. But in order for God to get us anywhere, He has to maneuver us. He has to wrestle with us. In hindsight, you can see it. Yeah, sometimes you, you, think, you think, you know, how did I get here? Well, He had to wrestle you this way. You know, He had to maneuver you through uh, some places that, you know, that you were going that He didn't want you to go. So He had to wrestle with you and maneuver you around to get you here. You're blessed, man. You're blessed because you got here. <laughs> He got in his presence. So, uh, anyway, he wrestled. And even, you know, I, I even say, if you look at the Bible and you read, he had to wrestle with Abraham as well. And Isaac. And Moses. And Moses and Jacob. And Noah. My well, word, he had to wrestle with Noah. I, you know, I'm not going in that ark. No way are you not going in that ark. You're going to build me the ark and go into it. So, anyway... And uh, the third one, and the last one is the Ammon. Uh, the Ammon is that Amethyst. is Amethyst. 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 There you go. Amethyst. Amethyst. And that stone is connected to uh, Gad. Mm -hmm. And it means good fortune. Mm -hmm. So the last three stones were judgment. <laughs> they were my wrestling or sacred schemes. And guess what? You've arrived. You've received the good fortune. <coughs> And so as we enter into God's kingdom, God fulfilled his promise to us. He let those things which we have heard from the beginning abide in you and in me, and that you shall have eternal kingdom with the Son and with the Father. And see, if you put these in, put these in perspective, you had Alexander the Great, who at that time was the most powerful person in the world. And prideful. And prideful. Overthrew Hiram. Mm -hmm. But guess what? They all serve this man. <laughs> they all serve this guy right here, right now. So that's one thing we need to, to really watch out for. But here comes your colors. <laughs> so the stones, that, the last three stones that the father had, and the color of them, and you'll be, be amazed by this because I really. I think as you, as you know, God's kingdom has many colors. He reveals to us in, Gen in Genesis 9, 13 through 17. I have set my rainbow as a covenant between me and all flesh. So right away, he's given you a color perspective of his kingdom. Okay? A jack in it. Color is clear and red. Now we see, we know, and there's no doubt about it, that it represents Yeshua. The blood and the water of Yeshua as he was hanging on the tree of sacrifice. The second one, the agate, was white and blue. Okay, now remember, they just they were kind of Intermix, you see white and blue in the stone. Kind of swirl, kind yeah, of kind of swirl. It also represents the glory of God and the colors of God's throne, heavenly throne room. Now the amethyst, this color was purple. It represents the royalty, the royalty of Yeshua, and the royal priesthood, his royal priesthood, which is, guess what? Company. That's right, all, all of us. us. And as we enter in, as the uh, children of the king, you are in his royal priesthood. I think you'll be given that, that robe of purple as, as part of his kingdom and his priesthood. We all have white. You know, we'll all be in his glory and in his presence. But that's the sight of, to me, Lucifer's breastplate. His uh, 
not only his rise, it shows you what, what the things that God had presented him with. The gifts that God had given him. And uh, yeah, we understand that I think there's a, a teaching that I did about the gifts of God and how them represent how they're represented in the breastplate. And how it, he says in his word, not everybody will receive all the gifts. Because what happens? Pride. Pride. Arrogance that steps in. It'll cause your downfall. That's why you got to watch uh, praise. You know, how you praise things. How praise and worship you. If you see a lot of it, a lot of praise teams and stuff fall apart on kind of praise. What happens? Arrogance and pride steps in. And uh, so... We want to praise Him as much as we can. We've got to make sure that we stay focused, not on Rabbi. Rabbi brings us in. Yeah, you know, we're all coming in through that music. But our job is not to focus on Him. Our job is to focus on God. Because He's the one receiving the praise. So we need to stay focused on uh, Yeshua and God Himself, God the Father. And that's Lucifer's breastplate. I've done, it two, I've done it two years ago, 